Abia State in southeast Nigeria is one of the states where there was an upset in the 2023 elections. The ruling party, the PDP, lost in the presidential election and in the governorship election. The governor, Okeze Okwazu, will be serving out the eight years, uh, two terms in office in May uh, 29 this year. He has been heavily criticized on his approach to governance in that state tonight. Governor Okay, so if who joins me live in our studio. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining yeah, us. Yeah, we're cool, Chef. <laughs> How's it been? Well, very well. I'm good. <laughs> How do you feel? In the next one month, uh, about two months now, you'll be getting out of office. Great relief. Great relief. Relief yes, that yeah. you're leaving office or relief of what? Relief that I'm leaving office. I have to get on to other things. And um, I've been on this job for eight years. I can't remember. Sleeping any time earlier than 2 a.m. for eight years, no vacation. Is it that you don't want to take it or you, don't, you are not entitled to one? I am somebody who likes to apply everything in me to the job I do. And um, I don't regret it anyway. But I think uh, the time has come for, for me to, to, to look through the window now and see what's there for me. Mm. Uh, what is humbling you? Because, I mean, for a governor to say this, that there's an humbling uh, situation. There's something that has happened to you recently that has uh, humbled you politically. And those uh, people can easily say, oh, maybe because you lost uh, the president, your party lost in the presidential election. Your party also lost uh, um, uh, in the governorship election. And uh, a very sad one, the loss of your candidate earlier before you picked another one. Mm -hmm. Are these the things that humbled you? Oh, no. This has, this has always been my mindset. Whenever I get into any office, um, the first file I open is a handover file because it will certainly come. Um, I've done eight years. There are governors who couldn't do eight years. I've done eight years. And I'm still strong and healthy. And um, I operate from what I call my biological clock. It's time to do other things. And I must also remind you that while I was governor, I was able to conclude my book in biochemistry, which was launched just a few months ago. So that tells you that I have capacity to do other things. And uh, I, I want to address other things in my life because I have timetable for the things I need to do within a given period. But it doesn't look like things went your way. You wanted to be a senator or you lost the election. Oh, yes. That was me offering to serve. And that is what it's all about. And uh, that is why I quickly called the person who was declared, I congratulated him and told him that I wasn't going to go to court. Um, reason is that I offered to serve. I thought I had something I wanted to bring. I thought there were gaps I needed to fill. I thought my experience as governor would have enabled me to um, flog my people into what was happening at the, at the federal level. But, uh, the outcome did not uh, suggest that. So I, I quickly moved. So your people rejected you? Because this is a more local election. Yes, but uh, not not uh, that is what the outcome looks like. But I'm only one governor who walks the street of of Aba every day. I, I literally trek, walk around Aba, and that is a privilege for any governor. Um, if you are not accepted there, you'll be pelted. You are from the Isi Alangwa local government, isn't it? Uh, no, Obingwa. Obingwa, yes. yes. And that's uh, like a hotbed politically, mm -hmm. uh, which your opponents have said. Uh, you are always uh, mm -hmm. not allowing opposition to, to thrive or to even operate. Um, uh, Alex Oti, we easily say that the last election he won, but he did not allow the result to go his way. This time around also, Obingwa, Isi Alangwa. These are areas that elections were really very tough. Uh, but, but this time around, and I asked that question, whether or not people rejected you. You've spent eight years in office to have lost out a senator. And you are not the only incumbent governor that has lost a senatorial election. It, it means a lot of, a lot. Have you learned the lesson of governors or being in a political office? That if you serve for almost eight years and your people still say they don't want you, what does this tell you? You see, what, what leads to the outcome of an election is a combination of many factors. It's a combination of many factors. And I, I am a very engaging person. I, I engage my people. I, I, if I wanted to run election, I'll be happy to run again and again and again there. But 
because the circumstances won't be the same. Um, and those who won today have also lost elections at one point or the other in their history. Uh, and I, I want some of you to come to a place where we can see political contestation as one offering himself to serve. For whatever reason it is, uh, if you don't come with that mindset, you make it a do or die affair. Uh, some of the issues are contestable. There are still uh, over 108,000 votes, uh, in the over 120 units that is still there. Uh, and results were declared inconclusive, and later they said it cannot be completed without those results. And the margin of lead between the first, second, and the third was not up to. Uh, 40,000 votes. So, uh, if somebody wanted to contest some of these things, there are reasons. I think a lot of things happen. But whatever thing it is, whatever thing it is, I'm at peace with myself and I said to my people, um, it, it is not entirely my loss. It is the loss of an opportunity to serve. So, I don't want to take it that uh, it's anything personal. But are you taking that you, you lost and people are rejoicing? Well, um, here again, as uh, some people are rejoicing, some are crying also. Because some of those who are rejoicing may be rejoicing because they've been out of power and they've been pushing to look through the door to see how they will get there for eight years and it, it's not been possible. And some of them felt lost out in the scheme of things and maybe that was time for them to you know, so we know how these things work in politics. Mm. If if you want me to raise people who are weeping, you will also see them weeping. The PDP candidate, has he agreed with you not to go to court? That was my advice as now a statesman to uh, those who ran election in my state. I said, well, uh, somebody took me to talk court for three and a half years, and I felt thoroughly distracted. Uh, because my first turn of four years, you spent three and a half, removed twice. Uh, high court removed me, a big court removed me, and all of that. And I said, can we come to a closure? Can you people find a way to allow this guy who's been declared to um, find time to talk about what he wants to do for Abia? Because he applied for the job for eight years, and now the opportunity has come. Can we let him give him some space. Um, so that was my advice. And um, incidentally, the um, APC candidate thought otherwise, and I think he has gone to the Unfortunately, too, the, the, the Labour Party that was supposed to be the beneficiary of this my piece of advice are also contesting against the candidates of PDP that won 11 seats in the House of Assembly. You know, so that has drawn spanner in the so works. So could, could, it, could it change the, the scenario? I, I, anybody Is there a possibility that your candidate, for example, might be thinking otherwise? Anybody who wants to seek my advice will also get an advice that is consistent with my first comments in this regard, and that is to, to, to see if we can get a closure. But I don't know how to talk to somebody whose House of Assembly member is being challenged. By the same party, you are asking them not to go to court. Does this sound right? Hmm. Let me get your reaction to Professor Oti's statement. That's it. She said she was heavily induced uh, to uh, manipulate the result of the election. And easily, your opponent were point, pointing out accusing fingers. They're already making inference of uh, those who could, be possible, who could possibly be inducing the woman. This is very unfortunate. I have not met that professor before, and um, I, I I am shocked because in the first place, I think she is. If she's a professor, really, she should know that she doesn't even have the capacity to manipulate results because these are results that must have emanated from the units, collected at the ward, collected at the local government, and brought to for for her to just add them up and announce. I have not met her before, I have not spoken to her. If, if uh, I have met her, if I have spoken to her, 
let her come to the public and declare so. So I'm shocked that she's uh, making a big noise out of uh, nothing. The only thing was that at some point when I saw the coincidence in them and traced a little bit of her background, I complained to INEC that this lady was not going to be fair. But they told me that, uh, they assured me that they profiled her, but I, uh, I, 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 I am still shocked. And what she has betrayed in the aftermath of her uh, service, uh, or stewardship in Abia, indicates the fact that she is visibly uh, happy with what she did, which means she, uh, her level of bias in that regard could be uh, placed uh, in favor of one party or another. You don't think that she did right? Well, she has betrayed that uh, she had something uh, at the back of her mind, the mindset of her own before she came. But for me, um, that would be it. What would you ascribe to the loss of your party in Abia State? Well, many, many factors. My, my party did not put their acts together. I, as a person, did not campaign against I did not I did not campaign against him because I was of the opinion that the presidency should go to the south. But as a party man, immediately we arrived at the candidate. The next thing was, well, what do we tell the south? Can we get the national chairman back so that we can have something on the table which we can campaign? And um, that wasn't to come also. So it became a difficult thing to stand on the podium and begin to campaign against somebody like Peter. So our party was weakened, run up to. And I lost a candidate. I had to replace my candidate. I needed to also talk to a lot of people. And then uh, at some point also, um, my calculation politically um, did not fall through. And what was that? Oh, well, the, 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 there are two major divides in Abia, the old Abia division and the old Bender division. So old Bender had three or four gubernatorial candidates, different parties. So we were thinking that votes would be shared. But down in the south, where we come from, uh, especially from Isia Langwa down to Uwa, um, after 25th of February, there was need for the political uh, leaders to come together to review how much they wanted to produce a governor after me. But I think that the political leaders felt that they did not need that governor as badly as some ordinary people um, needed a governor of old Abba division extraction. So when all the political leaders collapsed and decided to uh, move in a certain direction, the coupled with the uh, P2B bandwagon effect, it was easy for, for Ross to run into that headwind. But did you expect that the P2B effect was going to be that huge? To the extent yeah. that in it's two consecutive elections in the state, you lost, your party lost to the Labour Party. Yes, that, that P2B effect, um, I predicted it and I told my party, I even uh, volunteered this same opinion that um, reasonable politicians should not ignore what P2B was doing. Could, I mean, do you think that the P2B effect could, has a, has a brighter future oh. I, after now? It's, it's not for me to to determine because pretty much that will happen going forward will depend on how P2B manages the groundswell of support he has garnered. Um, how is he going to funnel this towards an agenda that can eventually materialize in his dream? Um, that is his remit. That is his business. Do you regret being part of the G5 Governors Pact? Or never. But I think that's... Um, um, one of the most brilliant positions I've taken as a politician. 
and the risk that came out of it? Oh, certainly. I, 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 you know, uh, any day. I mean, for any those day. who say that uh, El Paso has not lost election in this manner before, you lost two consecutive elections. You lost. If, uh, if, if that is the sacrifice for my principled position, that is okay. Was that in the interest of the people of your state? No, but that was in the interest of the unity of Nigeria. For those who say it was disloyalty and a public uh, rebellion against your political party which gave you a platform, but how first, do you, what first, do you say to that? First, loyalty to one Nigeria, loyalty to United Nigeria. If tomorrow, after a southern president, I'll be one of those who will say it is turn of the north and I'll do the same thing. So do you agree with the election of Balatinobu? To the extent that he is from southern Nigeria, I think that part of what we need to unite Nigeria has been presented to us. Going forward, how he manages it is also another conversation. Was he, was Balatinobu part of the arrangement within the G5? Oh, never. No, no, no. His no. matter never came up? No, 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 no. Part of what I was doing as a person in G5 was to open the window for conversation. Because my late father told me, for whatever reason, you must remain on the negotiation table. You never leave the table. So I kept telling my people, can we find a way to find a solution? There was a time, since we cannot change the candidates, can we do an internal arrangement to get the national chairman to the south so that people can begin to campaign in the south with something. But for me, as a person, I my tolerance threshold can take a little bit of arrogance. But for some people, they can't take arrogance. So it continues. So where was this arrogance coming from? Oh, that we can we can go the whole hog without you. We can do this without this. We can do, you know, and it's not... Is it from the candidate, the presidential candidate of your party? Well, or where is the arrogance? Because Nigerians, I mean, you politicians, you know, the, you know pretty much what is going on. No, 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 the first, but in plain terms, see, where is the arrogance coming from? The, the, the mechanics that was driving our party at that time betrayed this arrogance. It's not about one person or the other, but the mechanics, the organism betrayed this arrogance that we can do this that we can do this. And the G5 wanted to show them that not necessarily that want, narrative not, work. Not, not necessarily wanted, wanting to show anybody. But the G5 was saying, part of what we need in this country, if you ask me as a person, and I, if I have the privilege of volunteering advice to whosoever is, is the president of this country, my advice would be, invest your time in unifying Nigeria. Invest your time in bringing everybody on board, not South, Ishekiri, Ibo, Awosa, Fufu, the youth, women, everybody on the table. It is our country. And once you do that, we can find capacity to deal with insecurity. We can find people with capability to deal with the economy. We can find people to solve all our problems going forward. But the first thing to do is to break down these walls of disunity and mistrust. Can we hold the hand of one another again, once again, to say, this is our country? What do you make of a Tinobu as a president? I don't understand your question. I mean, is your, the G5, stood for a southern governor? I mean, a southern president. Mm -hmm. But Paul Tinobu has emerged as a president-elect. In his capacity and the kind of person that he is, what do you make of him leading this country in terms of capacity, in terms of uh, abilities? If I want to answer your question directly, I must take a cue from perhaps what he has done before and um, his relationship with people. I think he has a fair chance, but what he makes out of it is also entirely his remit. Because, but he is coming from a place that is a bit weaker than where the incumbent president started off in 2015. Because the incumbent president had goodwill, enormous goodwill. People gave him a lot of goodwill up front that he was going to get things right. Um, and the hope was there, lined up behind him, he was going to get things right. So 
President Bola Tinubu is not coming with that much of goodwill capital, but he can still surprise a lot of uh, pessimists. I think that going forward, we should give him a chance. I listened to their last guest, and I love one of the things he said, which is that this country is so huge and important to all of us that we cannot abandon this country just because Baz lost the territorial election, or my party lost the territorial election. We must find a way to dredge up hope from this despondency to march forward. It's about service. All right. So uh, I'd like to come to Abia governance now, but this G5 alliance and your participation in that alliance, um, is there any regret for you? Would you do this again if, you, if there was a need for it? Yes. Like I said before, after a Southern presidency, I'll be one of those who will say it is turn of the north. Or was there anything that you thought that could have been done differently? Meaning my party? Or Within the G5, the manner of approach, what you guys did? I, I, think, I think that um, we, we, we gave sufficient latitude and window for that matter to be resolved. Meetings were held in Nigeria, outside Nigeria. Um, engagements were led, conversations were held, and the bottom line was, can you give members of the South something to campaign with, to enable me to stand on the podium and campaign for my party alongside as Tinubu, as, as uh, P2B was But campaigning. all of these did not work. Who would you blame for that? Like I said before, the, 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 the mechanics, the, 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 whatever drives the party betrayed a lot of arrogance. Mm. We, and when, when, a, when a man is full of confidence, and that is when he is also open for... All right. Let, let's talk about Abia State now, because a lot of uh, uh, citizens and residents of Abia State will be looking forward to uh, hearing from you on your manner of approach in uh, this eight year um, uh, was opportunity that they gave you. Would you say you have done well as a governor? Yes, even in the midst of things which I think I've not done, but the much I have done um, gives me confidence to say yes. Why are your opponents describing your time as a governor of Abia State as a failure? Because they have an agenda, and that agenda is to demarket me and do everything to make sure that nothing nice is seen. And um, it's a strategy which people use in engage marketers and uh, even people on the streets. Some of them are paid 10,000 10, just to call on radio and say things that uh, are not true. I say this because um, the, the things we have done is so visible. Uh, if anybody was in Abia in 2015 and uh, takes a trip to Abia today, you will see a few things for yourself. One of them is that... How do I challenge your, your aides to give us some of the evidence of what you have done. Okay. And we have facts to on some of what you have also done and perhaps uh, what you have not done, which will also, and part of whatever you have done, which uh, had challenged some of your aides to let us see mm -hmm. evidence of what, we, what, you, what you've done. I probably would like you to speak to some of these issues. Okay. I mean, as a two-term governor, and Governors being a major issue on the lips of uh, a lot of people in your state who think that the potentials of that state is enormous. And they think from the potentials on the performance, they are too far apart. Uh, apart. And that's why they think that it's a lot of disappointment rather than what they, that could be visible. Well, here again, I said that that assessment is skewed and is coming from the lips of those who are looking for opportunity to and luckily, luckily, one of those who's been um, battling for the past eight years now has an opportunity. And um, our hope is that this manifesto and uh, strategy 
for leading Abia will come to the fore. But that is not why I am here today. I, I want to say, Shehu, with all respect, um, I set out to lead Abia and create a better life through five pillars. And I enunciated several enablers to drive these five pillars. These five pillars are known. They are things we do well. Trade and commerce, small and medium scale enterprises, agriculture, education, oil and gas. Today, Abia is the SME capital of Nigeria. I don't know if you have heard about that. What are the from, figures to support that? Who, from the lips of the vice president himself. Because he has visited Abia on more than three occasions to see what we are doing. When we got to Abia in 2015, we looked at the problem of SMEs, power, marketing, automation. And today, as I speak, we have enabled geometric power to provide alternative source of power. There is an area of independent power plant, which we did in collaboration with the federal government, in addition to the regular power and other sources of power that people can use. In terms of automation, we sent 30 shoemakers to China to learn how to do shoes with machines. And we have followed up by building a shoe manufacturing company that produces 5,000 pairs of shoes. So today, the shoes that are coming out from Abia do not look like what it used to be. Eight years ago. We're talking about you were talking about the five pillars in which you uh, you told the people of Abia Stay about. But uh, I mean, I'm wondering how you explain to some of the resident citizens of Abia State who believe that they have been badly governed. Uh, perhaps, I mean, a, a chance of response also to what uh, the the governor governor elect said. Let me allow you to listen, and I'd like you to respond to what he said. This was my interview with uh, uh, governor elect of Abia State, Alex. So to take a listen to it. It would have been difficult to run for the third time if the reason I had decided to run in the first place uh, had been dealt with by the outgoing administration. But what we see is that the decay is getting even deeper. The rot is getting worse. Uh, salaries have not been paid for several months and years. Pensioners have not been paid for about 56 months. So people are actually tired and people need the change. Respond to that. Um, he's talking about salary. I have 31,000 workers in Abia workforce. And 29,000 of them are up to date as I speak in salary payment. Pension and salaries of parastatas, which is the 2,000 that is struggling with payment of salary. Parastatas receive subvention. I don't pay their salary because they are revenue generating agencies. But I don't run away from responsibility. The issue of pension has been there perennially since the past, since the past 24 years. When your first time you promised to clear it? Oh yeah, I did as much as I could. This government and this administration passed two, two, three recessions. When I came, within three months of my administration, I paid 11 months arrears of salary. Those 11 months, were they accumulated while I was still running as governor? So if you take off, take up position as governor, you have a, accepted to take both liability and asset. And I don't like to complain. I didn't have to talk about what my predecessors did not do. Because what gave me my job in the first place was because there are things they didn't do. So for somebody to come and make a sweeping statement that no salary has been paid is a lie. How, how many see. months of salaries are you owing presently? I'm not owing any core civil servant any salary. Oh, you talk, you talk about 2,000 or yes, thereabouts? They, they belong to the parastatas. I give you... Under the state government? Yes, I give you an example. And so you don't, you don't think that they... No, allow, allow, me, allow me to bed my argument. If you are the general manager of... I give you an example. Abia State uh, Transport Corporation. And you receive a subvention of a certain amount 
of money every month. And you collect money as a result of business you do. Why shouldn't you pay your drivers? Why shouldn't you pay your drivers? Because there are no free lunch anywhere. If you run the Abia State Polytechnic, for instance, you collect the school fees from 10,000 students. You collect examination fees, you collect everything. And I'm supposed to give you a subvention of 100 million every month. And then you went and hired a professor from Oxford to come and teach English language. And you did not tell me you were hiring a professor. And you agreed to pay him $1 million. You will find money and pay. My duty is to release that subvention to you. So they don't pay money into any government coffers, but they are supposed to generate and run their parastatas themselves. But that is not even because I don't like to make excuses. This is what I don't like to do. I'm saying that 31,000 people in my workforce, I have maintained and paid 29,000 of them regularly up to that. So if I am doing some reorganization and insisting that you must be able to stand on your feet, I do not think it is a bad idea. There is another aspect which, of course, those who are not being paid salary will be watching tonight and they will feel very sad because they are citizens or residents of Abia State and they deserve the, the wages of their labor for the government and there is no excuse that will suffice for their families in which they feed. And perhaps is there any possibility of assurance that these people might be paid within the next two months that you have left in office? Oh, I'll keep paying to the best of my ability, but um, whatever is left unpaid, just like I inherited when I came, will also be paid by the next administration. Because, you know, the buck tossed stuff on your table. Exactly. You said you'll be responsible for all citizens of Abbey State. That is true. And these people, over 2,000 of them, that have not been paid. That is true. That's a failure on the side of government, isn't it? Yes, but they have to follow my leading. If I say you must account, if you have 42 accounts, you must close them. If I say you don't have to put 60 people at the gate, two gates, 60 people manning it, you must do that. Otherwise, if you keep keeping them, you mm -hmm. must take part of the responsibility. Governor, the MBS figure about unemployment rate in Abia State, uh, national uh, unemployment rate is about 33.3%. Abia unemployment rate is 51%. Poverty rate in Abia State is 31%. How is this so? After almost eight years, Abia enough, is the least, third least in poverty index. If it is 31%, then others will be, will be far, far, far higher than that. It's the least is the third least in terms of poverty index in Nigeria. Well, your, maybe your figures are not correct. 51% unemployment rate no, is no, what no, we have. No, no, no. That, 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 that can be true. You know why? You know why? Why? I have over one million people doing SMEs in Abia. That is a World Bank statistics. I inherited it from Okonji Wala when he brought the World Bank uh, managing director to Abia. My people are not necessarily a safe state. That is why Abia is the safest state in the southeast. Really? Uh, yes. Even with the uh, the seats at home, the IPOB activities, the kidnapping, and some of the killings that. So we... you don't know that Abia is the safest state. No, in no I'm the asking southeast. you. Yes. With all of this incident, is st you still refer to it as the safest. Safest state in the southeast. Yes. You can ask anybody. So, Governor, let me take you to a rather uh, puzzling situation. There is a 27.4 billion bank loan that is, I mean to have come from the World Bank. What has come of that? What have you used it for? This is new map projects. Um, a new map project people know that it does not is not paid into government coffers. This is also one of the big time propaganda that people vent. World Bank new map projects is in more than fifteen states across Nigeria. And the World Bank procurement process, engagement of contractor process, bidding process. In fact, I think the bid is opened in Washington. I have no hand, and government of Abia State has no hand in who does what. Our duty is to defend the projects we want new map to intervene. So what are the erosion? projects that people can see? Amoda Isungu erosion site. Nsulu erosion site. Ngwa Road is there. Oboya, Orata. 
Aja Road. All the roads, in fact, as I speak, somebody was on Uber Herald today doing inspection. It is not possible for anybody to deep hand into World Bank money. This so is you are a no-brainer. So you are spending it judiciously? I am not spending. The World Bank is spending. So let me ask you, Governor, do you go out sometimes when it's rainy to see what is happening in your state? Oh, certainly. Are you aware about this state? I mean, erosion and how it affects the people of your state. And I'd like to mention some roads that these have affected. Rose, Fox Road. Over here Road, over here to Oahu, to Ogbo Hill, to Potakot Road, to Obingwa, to Umahia, Abba South Local the, Government, the, the, the Asa Road, Jubilee the, Road. The, 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 these are roads that the, people the, the, of your state are complaining about. No, 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 no. no. Obingwa is not a road. Obingwa is a local government. They're just modeling up things. The place we have a flooding problem today in my state is around that area. India Guru used to be, if you remember when they have India Guru flood disaster. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last flood disaster in Nigeria. Did you hear about any IDP camp in Abia State? What did you do? I dredged water side long before that flooded incident. I dredged India uh, Ifobra Pond, I dredged Omabai Pond, I dredged Orata Pond. Abia is one of the few states that did not experience that flooding. However, the flood at Ifobra, which is opposite area area, we had to do Fox Road and set up a head pump to pump water because the gradient won't carry water to water side. But this pump at the head, this head pump at the Ifobra pond there, needs somebody to pump it as soon as there is an overflow. So if people fail to pump it, Whenever there is an overflow, you may have flooding in our area. That is the only place I have flooding issue. And we are working on it even as I speak. I mean, so but beyond there, I was beyond that, this major roads there is no leading flood. these major communities, local government, and some of these roads that are a lot of people believe. I mentioned mm -hmm. a few of these roads, but the question is that even about, for example, mm -hmm. and those who visit will say, why is that city in such an eyesore? I such an eyesore, considering when, when, the state of infrastructure. When did you visit Abba last? What has happened in Abba, Governor? Wow. wow. The state of infrastructure in that. Let me tell you, as you enter Abba from either Oweri or Omoaya, what will greet you is the most beautiful flyover in my, my geopolitical zone. The Osisioma flyover, and that is the first flyover ever by any government in Abia State. That has reduced traveling time from that to Sisioma that used to be 45 minutes to city center to now less than 10 minutes. Then it will ease you into Abowere Road, newly constructed with two arm drainage. As you hit brass, you will see another road that is Fox Road, which is ongoing, leading to area area done by this government. If you go beyond there, you will get to Ezuku Road. Another road done by this government leading to Ezuku Market by your right. Flanking Ezuku Road is Milverton and Ojikelen. At Okigwe Road roundabout, you will see Okigwe Road. Another new road done by this government. And then off as you head towards Ezuku Market, you will see Osusu Road. Another road done by this government. You will see Omoma Road, another road done by this government. And some of these roads I'm mentioning are rigid paved roads. So are, are these so some this, of the things these that are propaganda. You, these, these are some of the things you use. Over the, 200 the roads. The borrowings that you, that you no, brought. No, no, no. Which see, is new map project. Is no, no, I'm not talking them. about the name and the World Bank. I'm talking about the loans that the state government. I mean, I'm talking about the debt burden of the state. Mm -hmm. What have you, what would you say these mm -hmm. loans because you'll be leaving this debt to the next government. Well, what, what is the debt profile? What was the debt profile in 2015? What is the debt profile now? You can tell us. No, but I'm telling you that we are safe. All the borrowings that I did will terminate before the 29th of May. And you will have been able to so, clear all? Of course. Because what I did, what I did was to, whatever that is the headroom we have, if it is 200, 300 million every month, I aggregate it and take a billion 
and you take the 3300 for 10 months. Governor, we are out of time now. And just in about 60 seconds, I'd like to... No, before you go, yeah. don't forget that we have done over 200 roads, four bridges. We have done 700 brand new classroom blocks, including four model schools. We have migrated into digital learning in Abia. Don't forget that we moved Abia State University from number 97 to 26 and the second best state school in Nigeria. Don't forget that Abia State has telehealth initiative that links over 700 primary health care centers to 16 doctors in our call room. What I'm becoming a brand new what, government what now. Say, Wait a minute. No, that's I'm because we are totally out of time, Governor. Okay. What would you say is your biggest achievement in office in eight years? My biggest achievement is that I'm becoming the safest state and the most stable state. It is also that I'm becoming a state that has moved up the ladder of education come first four years in West African Examination Council that has built two industries and employed over 10,000 people. This so, is the idea for everybody. So see. what would you also say to those who have a very strong belief that you are leaving behind perhaps the state in the worst condition and that they described you as more of a failure in your eight years? This government is bequeathing the first long-term development plan to the new government, the first industrial policy. If they leave the rim of propaganda, history and posterity will be fair to us. Governor okay, Zerpazu, thank you so much indeed for your time and, and your ability to be able to explain some of these issues. Thank you so much indeed for coming. You're welcome, Shelby. Appreciate it.